Hey up everyone! So continuing the Oscar season coverage today on the channel, I wanted to do a deep dive discussion on two categories which have kind of become entwined with each other. That's production design and costume design. In this video, I'll still give you my predicted five for each of the categories, but the main focus of this video is discussing how costume design and production design has really shaped up to be a two-way race between two films, Barbie and Poor Things. From the very first moment that we saw the first trailer for Barbie, it seemed like it already had the wins for production design and costume design in the bag. And then along came Poor Things, which debuted at the Venice Film Festival, and then all of a sudden, Barbie had a challenger for these categories. And now we have a genuine race for both costumes and production design. Of course, we still have films like The Color Purple and Napoleon, which could be late admissions to the race for both costume design and production design, but we're gonna wait and see what the first reactions are like to those films. But even as of now, just based off the trailers for those movies, I still feel pretty confident that this is going to be a two-way race in both categories between Barbie and Poor Things. What's interesting about this two-category race between Barbie and Poor Things is just how much they have in common with each other. Both of these films were incredibly well received. I mean, at least by critics anyways, time will tell if Poor Things is celebrated by general audiences as much as it is critics. There's no way that Poor Things will make as much money as Barbie. It was after all the highest grossing movie of 2023, but I do anticipate that audiences are going to embrace Poor Things. But I am keen to see if audiences are gonna embrace it as much as they did The Favourite. Another thing that they both have in common is that both films are very likely to get nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. I'm feeling very confident on that prediction. They're also both very similar thematically because they're both films which have female protagonists who discover the beauty and hardships of what it means to be alive. And to cap it all off, these are two films which are brilliant examples of world building within a film, which is expertly conveyed through the costume design and the production design. And both of them would be absolutely deserving of the win in either category. But the question is, which will the Academy go for? So let's break it down one category at a time. We're gonna kick things off with production design. Who do I see getting into production design besides Sarah Greenwood and Katie Spencer for Barbie, as well as Shona Heath, James Price, and Susie Milek for Poor Things. This has been an incredible year for production design. We've seen plenty of films which have recreated or built entire towns just for their movies. The first one that pops into my head is Oppenheimer. Ruth de Young recreated the Los Alamos town which was built specifically for the families that were working on the atomic bomb testing actually not too far from where the real Los Alamos town is in New Mexico. And that's the thing with Oppenheimer, everything about that film was about scale and size, and there were no half measures when it came to the production design. Both exterior, but also interior. The gymnasium sequence really comes to mind, and that's a really good example of like, production design which is used to emphasize a character's state of mind, because it really is, representative of how Oppenheimer is feeling internally at the time. I was also in awe of the sets in Killers of the Flower Moon by Jack Fisk and Adam Willis. They recreated a bustling high street in 20th century Oklahoma along with a railway station with extreme historical accuracy and impeccable detail. There was no CGI used, no soundstage, okay? They did that for real. And the fact that they did that in the actual Osage County just added another level of authenticity to the film. And of course, there's the town of Asteroid City, which Adam Stockhouse and made for Wes Addison's Asteroid City. In similar fashion to Barbie Land, the houses in Asteroid City look almost doll-like for the actors to play in. Stockhausen succeeded in creating a very cute 1950s pastel-colored town, which is very easy on the eyes, but Barbie really took it to the extreme, to the next level. So I worry, will they not give Asteroid City the nom for production design because it's a little too similar in aesthetic to Barbie? There's certainly room for both of them, and that's coming from someone who didn't even like Asteroid City all that much, but I really do respect and admire the production design of the film, and I would be very happy to see it get nominated. Susie Davies did amazing work on Saltburn. The film primarily takes place at the Saltburn estate and she did a wonderful job of bringing it to life. She did a marvelous job of decorating the interior of the mansion with all the usual indicators of excessive wealth, like chandeliers, endless bookshelves, oil paintings, historical artifacts, and lots of taxidermy as well. It's a place where you can really smell how musty it would be. It also has a showcase production design sequence with 
Oliver's Midsummer Night's Dream birthday party. And they also built an actual hedge maze for this film, so wow. <laughs> All right, let's see, who else do we have? Oh yeah, there's an argument to be made that Maestro could show up in this category. As it's one of those films which takes place over numerous decades, what helps you to place where you are in the period of time is through the costumes and also the production design. Tamara Deverell and Patricia Cuccia really brought Graceland to life in Priscilla, and as we already know, the Academy does seem to like Elvis. They gave Elvis the nomination for production design last year. Will they be kind and give Priscilla the same nomination? The Zone of Interest has a very impactful setting, having this almost utopian-like garden in the family home being juxtaposed with, you know, Auschwitz in the background. And there's some films that we've yet to see, but the trailers do indicate that they could potentially show up for production design. They include Napoleon, Wonka, and The Color Purple. And there's some other films which I've seen which have production design which is unlikely to be nominated, but not impossible, but I still wanted to include them anyways. They include, uh, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret, Air, uh, the Taste of Things, The Creator, May, December, and Bo is Afraid. I would really love to see Bo is Afraid get a nomination for production design because it's very representative of Bo's mental state throughout the film. You know how like Oppenheimer has the gymnasium scene? Well, Bo is Afraid has the entire film. It's all reflected in the production design. But like I said before, I just don't see the Academy giving any nominations to Bo is Afraid, but if it did show up for production design, I would be delighted. So my current predicted five for production design as of November would currently be in reverse order, at number five, I'm gonna go with Saltburn. The fourth spot, I'm gonna give to Oppenheimer. Third spot, I'm giving to Killers of the Flower Moon. Barbie and Poor Things are gonna get my one and two slots, but the question is, who do I give the number one slot to? Who do I think is gonna win this? Keep in mind, my opinion could change over the coming months. Like, it's still very early. It's only November. The Oscars isn't until March. It's so tough to choose between the two of them because I absolutely love the sets in both these movies. They're both incredibly well realized, brimming with creativity and imagination. They're both films where I really wanna go to visit, you know, I want to step into the world of the film because of how good the sets are. They're both very delicious, but for different reasons, because one is very sugary bubblegum pink, and the other is a twist on the Victorian era, and it's very steampunk. It could go either way. Part of me thinks that Poor Things is in a better position than Barbie to win Best Picture, and if the Academy really wants to celebrate it, then they might give it a big package of awards where production design could go along with it. Kind of like Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water, which won Best Picture, another brilliant example of world building. However, even though I do think Poor Things is in a better position to win Best Picture compared to Barbie, the correlation between production design and Best Picture isn't actually all that high. In fact, The Shape of Water is the only recent Best Picture winner which pull it off. Like you have to go as far back as 2003 to find another example of it when Lord of the Rings Return of the King won for production design as well. So I don't think Poor Things necessarily has an advantage here. I will say that Poor Things is more sprawling in terms of production design because it takes place all over the world in like London and Lisbon and Paris. And the interior of the cruise ship as well in Poor Things is very impressive. However, Barbie is mostly confined to the one location of Barbie Land, but Within Barbie Land, we do have, you know, the cul-de-sac, the, the White House or the Pink House Oval Office, if you will, as well as the beach, of course. So while it technically is just one place, we do get little pockets of Barbie Land. Honestly, it's tough to choose, but the question I ended up asking myself was, gun in my head, if you could only visit one of these places in real life, which would you rather visit? And I knew immediately it was Barbie. What can I say? Life in plastic looks fantastic. I'm also super basic and love bright colors, which is probably why I'm more attracted to Barbie. I was watching the bonus features on the Barbie Blu-ray a few nights ago, and it really helped sell me on the idea of it winning production design. If you're like me and you really want to know how they constructed the world of Barbie Land, then yeah, I highly recommend watching the special features because it really is fascinating to learn how they crafted it all. I think the world of Barbie Land is so unique a world. Like it's not quite like anything we've seen in the world of cinema. Like of course we have seen this world in our toys, you know, as kids and you really do get a sense of 
the toy world coming to life. It's like we stepped inside a toy box. But yeah, watching Barbie is like stepping into a plastic Palm Springs. It's so playful and fun and you really do want to go there. I'm kind of hoping that the company I work for, Secret Cinema, end up doing Barbie one day as an immersive cinematic experience because it just lends itself brilliantly to the idea of stepping into a world, dressing up in the Barbie and Ken costumes and getting lost in Barbie land. It would be so awesome. And it's all the little attention to details in Barbie land which I really admire and make the film feel so special. Like the fact that the, the height of the rooms in the Barbie houses is 23% smaller than it would be in an actual room because in dollhouses, you know, Barbies can lift their hand and they'll be able to touch the ceiling. As well as like the kitchen and the fridge where you've got, you know, the plastic cartons for Barbie to pull out, but on the back you've got that sort of 2D decal sticker with all the food on it, like you would see in a dollhouse. And the piece de resistance, the real selling point for production design for Barbie, has to be the transportation sequence between Barbie land and the real world and vice versa, where we get all the 2D backdrops which are moving whilst the actors stay stationary. Like, it's such an old school, like silent movie era technique of, of showing movement in film, but it's so beautifully expressive and animated almost. It's, uh, it's, it's a technique we don't often see, which makes it feel special. So it's kind of fusing like old school stuff with modern day and I love that. I, I, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> One of the greatest things about Barbie is just how tactile the film feels. Like it's a film that you want to step into and there's so much artistry and craftsmanship on display. So yeah, I'm putting poor things in at number two and I'm predicting for now that Barbie is going to win in production design. Yep, that's my predicted five for now. Please do let me know in the comment section below what are your predicted five for this category. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let's discuss. Now, let's move on to costume design. I very much see this race as a two-way race between Jacqueline Duran for Barbie and Holly Waddington for Poor Things. But who else is in the running for costumes? I think there's gonna be a bit of overlap for my predictions for production design along with costume design. I think Jacqueline West has an excellent shot of being nominated for Killers of the Flower Moon because she really put a spotlight on the fashion of the Osage community. She had a team of consultants and Osage artists to collaborate with to bring as much authenticity to the costumes as she could. The best examples of costumes in this film are undoubtedly on Molly and her sisters. One aspect that really comes to mind is the blankets that they all wear. It's kind of like their version of armor. Also the wedding sequence between Molly and Ernest is a beautiful melding of cultures and Lily Gladstone looks absolutely gorgeous in that almost military garb that she wears. And then of course you've got like eye-catching Stetsons, earrings and chokers. It's just exquisite costume work. Mark Bridges took us through the decades with his costume work in Maestro. There are some divine outfits in Maestro. Most of them are on Carrie Mulligan. Yeah, the costume work in Maestro really communicates to the audience what decade we're in. Stacey Patat did the costume work for Priscilla and fashion plays an important role in the story, particularly in the shopping sequence in which Elvis pretty much customizes his girlfriend's signature style for her. Catherine Martin actually came pretty close to winning this category last year for her costume work on Elvis, uh, but she lost out to Ruthie Carter for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Will the Academy embrace Priscilla like they did Elvis though? Arguably Elvis was a bigger fashion icon, but Priscilla certainly did have her own style and uh, the clothes do stand out in Priscilla, so it could happen, but I'm not anticipating it to be a threat to either Barbie or poor things. When I think of Oppenheimer, I'll be honest, I don't immediately think of costumes, but there's no denying how good Killian Murphy looks in that signature Oppenheimer hat. So maybe Ellen Morojnik could show up for her costume work in Oppenheimer. Another great period film with excellent costumes, which I think is being a bit overlooked this year, is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. This has got some wonderful costume work from Anne Roth, who you guys might not know, is actually the woman who appears in Barbie during the scene where Barbie's on the bench and she's experiencing like human emotions for the first time. That old lady is Anne Roth. It's actually got me thinking, could her cameo in Barbie actually help the 92 year old get another Oscar nomination? She recently won in this category a few years ago for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. The costume work in this movie is quite subtle, but it's 
very well executed, like it's very accurate to the 70s aesthetic. The costume work in Chevalier also feels very much like the stereotypical type of costume designs that the Academy would nominate. It's period, it's fancy, it's elaborate, the costumes are a major selling point of the movie, they're very noticeable, it's very Anna Karenina. I don't know how many people have seen Chevalier, it's one of those films I haven't heard a lot of discussion about, but having said that, it wouldn't surprise me if it did manage to show up in costume design. Some of the films where I appreciate the costume designs are The Zone of Interest, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, The Taste of Things, and Asteroid City. Not expecting any of them to get nominated, but you never know. Also, a few more films that have yet to be seen, but do show promising costume work in the trailers include Napoleon, uh, Wonka, The Color Purple, and also the new Hunger Games movie, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. But I wouldn't get your hopes up for that film because none of the previous Hunger Games movies managed to ever get an Oscar nomination for costume design, which is shocking. They had Effie Trinket, for God's sakes. She is a fashion icon. So yeah, my current predicted five for costume design as of November in reverse order would be at number five, I'm gonna go with Maestro. It's not necessarily a film which screams costume design, but I do think it's a film that the Academy will appreciate the costume work in it. I could see it missing, but for now, I'm gonna pop it in at number five. And number four, I'm gonna be bold and predict a film that I haven't even seen yet and give it to Francine Jameson Tanchuk for The Color Purple. I'm just going off the trailer here, but the costumes in the trailer for The Color Purple are really front and center. I mean. Look at Taraji P. Henson, Fantasia, they look stunning. It's very showgirls, like very theatrical. And you have to remember that this is a musical as well. And often musicals do show up in the costume department in the Oscars. So yeah, the costume work in The Color Purple is very vibrant and eye-catching. So for now, I'm putting it in at number four. At number three, I think it's obvious, I'm going with Killers of the Flower Moon, no explanation needed. But again, I strongly do believe that this category is gonna come down to Barbie and Poor Things for the win. The question is, who do I give the number one slot to? This, I think, is even harder to predict than production design. Because on the one hand, you've got Barbie, where Jacqueline Duran takes the audience on a guided tour through the evolution of all of Mattel's Barbie outfits through the decades. Like, the film starts off with, you know, the beach sequence, and it's very 60s, then it goes 70s with the Dance the Night number, and then you get 80s and 90s when Barbie and Ken go into the real world, and by the end of the film where Barbie, you know, goes on her full journey of becoming a woman, everything feels more modern. But then on the other hand, you've got Holly Waddington's bold, ambitious, and ostentatious costume designs in Poor Things. It's a world of outrageous silhouettes, poofy sleeves, corsets, and ruffles. And much like Margot Robbie's Barbie, Emma Stone's Bella Baxter also goes on a journey of self-discovery, which is very much reflected in the costume designs. It really shows, like, where she's at mentally in her development. The designs and color palettes of her wardrobe are more oddball in her youth, let's call it. Kind of like a kid who's just wandered into their mother's closet and put on everything that they could find all at once. It's very childlike. It's like playing dress up. But as the film progresses and she starts to come into her own, things become neater, tidier, more organized. And the actual construction of the garments in Poor Things is way more avant-garde in Poor Things than it is Barbie, because Barbie, Jacqueline Duran really just had to recreate classic looks from the Barbies throughout the decades, whereas in Poor Things, everything that Bella Baxter wears came out of Holly Waddington's own head, okay? Arguably, Holly Waddington had more work to do uh, than uh, Jacqueline Duran, because she had to create things out of nothing, whereas at least Jacqueline Duran had sources to go off of. Which to me kind of feels like the more impressive accomplishment. We saw a similar thing happen last year when Ruthie Carter won her second Oscar for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. She was kind of up against um, Catherine Martin for Elvis. And it's similar because um, Catherine Martin basically had to recreate the iconic looks of Elvis. She had something to go off of. And while you can make the argument Ruthie Carter did have the comics, you know, to draw inspiration from, pretty much everything that she fashioned for both of the Black Panther movies came out of her own head, okay? She was responsible for a lot of the world building in that. So yeah, just based off what happened last year, there's a very compelling argument that Holly Waddington could end up winning costume designs because arguably she did have more work to do because all of her designs were original creations, whereas 
Jacqueline Duran was recreating a lot of iconic Barbie looks. And another thing to keep in mind is that Jacqueline Duran is more established than Holly Waddington is because this will probably end up being Holly Waddington's first ever Oscar nomination. But for Jacqueline Duran, she is well seasoned within the Academy. She's been nominated, what, eight times and won twice. Once for Anna Karenina, funnily enough, and the other was back in 2019 for Little Women. So she probably is a little bit more connected within the Academy circle than Holly Waddington is. But again, there is the argument to be made that because Duran is a fairly recent winner, winning in 2019 for Little Women, that the Academy have an opportunity to welcome someone new into the club with Holly Waddington. And again, I do anticipate that Poor Things is a more likely contender to win Best Picture over Barbie. And if the Academy really does love Poor Things, they might want to give it a nice bundle and costumes does make a lot of sense. I can totally see Poor Things winning costume design. But it's Barbie. The whole film is a two hour showcase of clothing. There's even a sequence which shows off some of Barbie's most iconic outfits from her wardrobe, okay? So arguably fashion is more prevalent in Barbie than it is Poor Things. And sometimes if the movie has a fashion related plot line, that can really help it win costume design. Look at Cruella and Phantom Thread. So it really is a tough call. They both have super solid arguments to win. I am a fan of both of them. It really does feel like a coin toss this category. What could happen is because Barbie and Poor Things are the front runners in two design categories, we might see an outcome where the Academy decides to be diplomatic and gives one to Barbie and one to Poor Things. Like they might give production design to Barbie and costume design to Poor Things or vice versa. But if one of them were to win in both categories, I feel like Barbie would be more likely to win in both categories over Poor Things. And here's my reason why. I think Poor Things has the potential to win in a lot of other, other categories. Like it could win Best Actress, it could win Best Picture, Director, Adapted Screenplay, Cinematography, okay? It's, it's not the only categories where it has a decent shot to win. But with Barbie, I think its best chances of winning Oscars are in production design, costume design, best song, and maybe original screenplay, but I'm, I'm not predicting that. And with the exception of Everything Everywhere All At Once winning seven Oscars last year, in recent years, the Academy very rarely dole out loads of Oscars to the same film. They like to spread the love around when they can. Poor Things could easily win more Oscars than Barbie on Oscars night, but I do think the Academy will want to acknowledge Barbie for its impact on the cultural zeitgeist as well as the box office. So it wouldn't surprise me if it did end up collecting both costume design and production design. So for now, I'm gonna predict that Barbie also wins in costume design. But again, I wanna stress, I don't feel confident on this prediction. Like right now, it's like 51% Barbie, 49% uh, poor things. And it could easily go the other way over award season. We still need to see how the precursors shape up. So yeah, for now in costume design, I'm gonna put poor things in at number two and Barbie in at number one. But I do wanna hear from you guys. Who are you predicting is gonna win in costume design this year? Let me know in the comment section down below and please give me your reasons why because I am so torn between these two films. Like I keep going back and forth, but I'd love to hear other people's arguments as to why they think their selection is gonna win costume design. Thank you guys for sticking around this long. If you do have any requests for any other Oscar categories that you'd like to see me do a deep dive discussion video on, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, help me out with a little thumbs up button. It's really good for the algorithm. And yeah, if you want any more movie, TV, and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching guys. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Hirfield, and I'll see you next time.